Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite master herbalist, Kina, and today we'll be talking about diabetes. So as I said, today we'll be talking about diabetes and one in 10 Americans actually has diabetes and one in three Americans is pre-diabetic, meaning you are just teeter-tottering on the edge um, of getting diabetes and that's, you know, either it can be genetic or it can be issues of diet and lifestyle and things like that. So I really wanted to um, do a video and just explain some of the options. I mean, it's a little salacious that you can see that in the, the title of this video, but really I want you guys to have um, as many options as possible to cover as many ailments as possible from a holistic or alternative medicine herbal perspective. So that's why we're talking about diabetes today. Now, the big, you know, pharmaceutical that is like the number one prescribed and sometimes even considered the gold standard in diabetes care is metformin. And you can see that, you know, in the title. So, you know, we were going to be talking about metformin today. So in our, you know, big pharma versus nature, obviously metformin is, is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, um, metformin is widely prescribed. It is widely used. And for many people, it works and helps keep keep their blood sugar and A1C and all that stuff under control. So obviously that is what we want. However, metformin does have a ton of side effects and most of them are present in the digestive tract. So anybody who's ever taken metformin, they already know. You don't even have to ask like what are the side effects because everybody knows. Severe stomach cramps, diarrhea, pain, some people have vomiting um, or nausea, uh, just all kinds of digestive specific uh, stomach pain, constipation. And then for those of us who are not overweight, um, as a result of or in combination with our diabetes uh, diagnosis, then unwanted weight loss can also be an issue because metformin can have kind of an appetite suppressive um, reaction in the body. So like I said, all of the main or more common side effects have to do with the digestive system and typically it's very uncomfortable. Now I am not recommending that you cold turkey, jump off your metformin if that's what you're on, absolutely not. But you do want to talk to your doctor and there are some things you can do if you desire to stay on metformin. You can ask your doctor for um, the extended release tablets so that the medicine kind of um, releases in your body at a slower pace so that you either don't have any of those side effects or you know it lessens those side effects you can take it at night to make it more palatable um, for you but uh, you know the reality is those issues are real if we have to go to work or school or live out in the world having you know immediate uh, like diarrhea or something like that, it's just not acceptable. It's just not something that you can live with um, while you're trying to keep that blood sugar under control and stay healthy. So that's why we're going to be really looking at what do we have, if anything, right, in nature that can be a help. So we're just going to jump right into it. Today we have two and uh, two specific herbs and then there's an herb compound that I want to talk to you guys about. It's kind of like an honorable mention because it's really effective. Um, and those three are going to be goat's rue, Ceylon cinnamon, and berberine. Okay, so first up is going to be goat's rue. I know some of these herbs have funny, crazy names, but trust me, they are effective. So goat's rue. Now I'll show you guys, you know, as best as I can here in this package. Um, it doesn't matter what brand you get, but I got this one. Um, I believe it was from the UK, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, I got this one from the UK. But like I said, goat's rue. Goat's rue is an herb that we're going to be using the leaves or the aerial parts. And when we talk about aerial parts, is leaves, stem, flowers, basically anything above ground, essentially. So goat's root is considered anti-diabetic, hypoglycemic. And if you don't understand that hypo means less or um, to decrease, glycemic is, re is referencing blood sugar, okay? So hypoglycemic means that it brings down the blood sugar quite naturally and quite effectively. It's also quite diuretic. And I know some people tend to have both high blood pressure and um, 
a diabetes together a lot of times so it's really a good herb that will kind of tackle both of those issues um, for you at the same time but obviously we're talking about diabetes today and that is a plant that is specifically indicated as anti-diabetic or, or hypoglycemic so um, it works really really well it's you know it's not kind of a yucky kind of rude or anything like that so it's really easy to take. Remember we talked about if you have a leaf, then that means it can be taken as an infusion, which just means like a tea, or, you know, y'all already know, I'm about to say it, team tincture, you can take it as a tincture, which I always recommend because it's fast acting, it's effective, it's portable, um, you can travel with small vials of it, um, and it's super easy, so that's why I would, you know, recommend, obviously, I'm always team tincture. Now, if you want to do an infusion, or tea with the goat's roux, then you can do one teaspoon per cup of hot water, okay? And you're gonna steep that as usual, 15 to 20 minutes, preferably cover the cup if you're gonna make a tea because you want any volatile oils or any of that stuff to stay in and not evaporate out. Um, and then you can do that up to three times a day to start regulating that blood sugar from a natural perspective. Now, if you're like me and you want a tincture, now we're talking about one to two milliliters um, sublingually or with that you know small shot of juice or water that we've talked about um, up to three times a day as well. So it's a lot less, right? It's, it's more portable. You can do it at work, at school, it's in your bag. You know, you don't have to kind of really remember to pack up leaves and be able to steep tea. It's one to two milliliters, which is like less than half a teaspoon. Um, so like I said, that's why I love it. But you have both of those options to start getting that goat's through into your diet or into your regimen, especially those of us who are pre-diabetic, right? Because when you're pre-diabetic, you're teeter-tottering on the edge. So you may not want to start you know, taking prescription medication right away because you're like, well, I'm technically not even diabetic. Well, get on that goat's through, okay? And start making some lifestyle changes so that you can get that blood sugar down and get it more regulated in a healthy way, okay? Okay, so nature contender number two is going to be cinnamon, but specifically Ceylon cinnamon, and that's C-E-Y-L-O-N, and I'll make sure that I put it somewhere, you know, in the description or, you know, here in the video for you guys. But see, these whole cinnamon sticks is what I have, but you can certainly get it ground up already in a powder, and they even sell it online in capsules if pills are easier for you. Now, I'm not sure why other types of cinnamon, other, you know, species of cinnamon, um, aren't as effective against diabetes or blood sugar. But see, so make sure that you find Ceylon cinnamon, okay? So not like your table cinnamon, or I forgot the name of like the regular cinnamon um, that we normally just use, like, you know, for cooking and things like that. That's not the one that you want. I mean, it may have some properties that are very similar because all um, cinnamon species kind of um, have the same, I guess, like root um, place that they come from. But Ceylon is really the one that's indicated for blood sugar regulation and bringing that um, blood sugar down. So just remember to look for that um, if that's what you're going to be using. Now, that, as you know, because you can see it, this isn't this isn't a root. This isn't a leaf. This is considered the bark of the tree. Okay. So when we're talking about bark, typically speaking, I would say use a decoction, which is boiling or simmering um, your herb in water for 20 minutes as opposed to doing the infusion where you just pour um, hot water over it like a tea. But cinnamon tends to be very thin. You can see that, thin and flaky. Um, so it's just not as difficult to break down. And it smells really good. Um, it's just cinnamon, right? It's just a different species of cinnamon. So with this one, you can still do that infusion. If you just have a few cinnamon sticks, I mean, technically you could use powdered cinnamon as well. Maybe use it in, um, if you don't mind the grinds and just pour the hot water over it. But if you do, uh, maybe get like a fine mesh um, kind of tea diffuser, um, smaller one that's really, really small so that the grains don't come out. And you can use that, but it's kind of easy to throw a couple sticks um, in some hot water and do that for yourself. Now, like I said, when we talk, it's so cinnamon is Ceylon cinnamon. It's indicated to be anti-diabetic. It is also um, stimulant. So I know a lot of times that we, when we find out we're either pre-diabetic or diabetic, you have this lethargy, this tiredness. Um, 
when you eat sometimes you actually feel sleepy even after you eat so having the saline cinnamon it's this kind of doubling effect of like giving you that boost again so that you can get through your days and you're not as sluggish but it's also working on that diet anti-diabetic property which is going to be bringing that blood sugar under control and getting that um, a1c under control so and I, know, I think wild carrot, even though that's like completely different than what we're talking about today, but I always want to give you guys more information. I believe wild carrot is indicated for A1C regulation too, but don't quote me on that. I would have to double check. But yeah, the Ceylon cinnamon. Now, in terms of taking it, like I said, you can do a diffusion, which is one to two, I mean, I'm sorry, not diffusion, infusion. <laughs> of one to two teaspoons up to three times a day now like i said that's a couple sticks right that's probably the whole day because you would only take off maybe like a thumb length you know if you were using sticks per um per cup but if you were using powder then obviously you can just scoop those one to two teaspoons obviously team tincture Team tincture. So you can also make a tincture. I actually have some tinctures, you know, kind of, I guess the word would be brewing or soaking right now with some saline cinnamon. But you can totally make you a cinnamon tincture, and that will probably be one of the best tasting tinctures that you'll ever have because we're always using leaves and roots and stuff like that. And, um, with the exception of maybe berries, you know, um, a cinnamon tincture is probably going to be one of the better tasting uh, tinctures that you have. And it's really easy to add to tea or coffee or just take it, you know, sublingually like we talk about. So this is a little bit easier to palate. But this one you're going to take five milliliters, which is about a teaspoon up to three times a day to regulate that blood sugar and get it under control um, and then also just plain old powdered ground saline cinnamon so you can do that as well but if you do that you're going to want a tablespoon so, and do not take that in your mouth we've all seen that crazy cinnamon challenge <laughs> it will you know make you cough and mess you up so like if you're going to do powder add it to a smoothie tea coffee um, just yogurt, you know, something like that. Make sure you mix it with something. But if you're going to just stick with plain old ground powdered cinnamon, then make sure that um, it's a whole tablespoon, but you only have to do that once a day. So technically, you could do a teaspoon three times a day, or you could do that tablespoon once a day, which is usually easy for me if I'm going to be using a powdered form of something because I just I throw everything in my morning smoothie. So like I said, the Ceylon cinnamon is definitely right for that blood sugar regulation. Um, I would recommend using it in combination with the goat's root if you already have diabetes. If you're pre-diabetic and you can't get a hold to goat's root, then try just adding the um, the saline cinnamon three times a day and let's see you know how that works out for you. You know, there's no side effects to it. It's cinnamon, um, so you're not gonna have that stomach cramping or any discomfort. So it's easy to incorporate this into your daily routine um, to really see how it affects you. And maybe at that next doctor's appointment, you know, your blood work will show that you know you have some improvement. So I really would like you guys to consider that cinnamon. And last but not least, as I said before, we have kind of an honorable mention and that's gonna be berberine. Now, I don't have any berberine on hand. I've had some in the past, um, and I'll, but I'll make sure to show it to you guys, um, you know, somewhere in the video. But berberine is not actually a plant in and of itself. It is actually a compound or a chemical that is extracted from the actual plant. So it, it's found in actually several plants. It's found in golden seal, um, philodendron, it's found in what else? Barberry, uh, tree turmeric, I'm trying to think. Oh, and, and Oregon grape as well. So it's, it's a compound that's found in many plants, um, you know, in our kind of herbal cupboard, if you have, you know, if you will. But it is sold as just the bourbon ring. Pre-extracted, you can get it pretty much anywhere online. Um, a lot of trusted brands. Um, but the wonderful thing about the compound berberine is clinical studies have actually shown it to be as effective or better than metformin. So most people are taking anywhere between 500 and 1500 milligrams a day of um, metformin. You take berberine exactly like you take metformin. So you can take 500 milligrams, 1000 milligrams, 1500 milligrams, anything like that, you know, of berberine. And so you do not have any stomach discomfort, no cramping, nothing like that, but it has the, it's incredible. It has the same effects as metformin. It can be appetite suppressant. It is definitely going to regulate that blood sugar and that A1C. Um, and it's, there's no, there's no side effects. It is amazing. And I'm going to make sure to link, um, some links to those studies that I'm talking about so that you can do your own research, talk to your own endocrinologist or doctor about berberine. It is 
incredible what it does for the body without all the side effects and it's been you know studied multiple times right up against that metformin and shows that it is at the same or better uh, in terms of blood sugar regulation so i really want you guys to do some homework and look into that if you are like over the metformin the, the stomach cramps the diarrhea the constipation the vomiting all that stuff is just like i can't do that look into that berberine okay um like i said i wish i had some to show you guys i just don't happen to have any on hand but i will show you some pictures of it and, and make sure that i have that link to um to those studies that i'm referencing Okay, so to recap, we have goat's root and we have Ceylon cinnamon and then that honorable mention about the berberine that I really want you guys to go ahead and check out. Now we're talking about big pharma versus nature. Like we all know if you take metformin, you don't even need me to convince you this time. You know the side effects, you know about all that um, digestive discomfort. With these, there are no known side effects, no known contraindications of either of these herbs. The only caution that I would say is that when taking goat's root, it is so effective against um, hypoglyce I mean, hyperglycemia, meaning that you know it works really well to reduce your blood sugar that you wanna be careful taking it alongside of anything that is also for bringing down your blood sugar. You don't want to get hypoglycemic where you start to get lightheaded and your blood sugar is too low. So if you're already on metformin or some other medication that regulates your blood sugar, you want to be really careful or talk to your doctor about using that go through. The cinnamon is fine, but the go through is so powerfully um, effective against hyper hyperglycemia that you want to be careful because in some people it actually does too good a job if you're taking other diabetes medication and it could bring the blood sugar too low so that's just only caution that i want you guys to um to take into consideration but those are very safe so as we've discussed many many times before you know you don't gotta believe me <laughs> do your research nature wins and you know that's just from my perspective some people are okay with side effects some people never experience side effects but if there's a chance that i can achieve the health that i want to achieve without having any potential side effects or any additional illnesses that it, it adds to my life that I didn't have before, I want that option, okay? So again, nature wins again, okay? And I know diabetes affects so many people, so many loved ones, even ourselves. Even when you don't have diabetes, even there's insulin issues like PCOS and um, you know insulin resistance. You know, insulin is such a powerful hormone in the body regulating um, you know, sugar digestion, hunger, all these different things, fat, fat metabolism, all that stuff. So it affects so many people. And I want you guys to have the best information possible so that you can take care of yourself. So I hope that really helped today. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Um, I'll, cause I'll make sure I put as many links as I can to information that I've mentioned today. But I really hope that that's helpful for you, especially if you kind of circle in that pre-diabetic wagon or PCOS or something like that. And now you kind of have something in your arsenal to help, you know, get through it and, and be as help, helpful as possible. So I will see you guys next time. Stay safe and stay happy. Bye.